Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I wanna start this video by saying a big thank you to all of you who have watched this playlist. I hope you're enjoying building this app. I know it's fairly simple, but we're really covering the foundations, the basics of building an app and getting it ready for the App Store. And in this final video, we're gonna wrap up our app by making it App Store ready by giving it a launch screen as well as an app icon. And both of these are required if you're gonna put an app into the App Store. And the launch screen is just a little startup loading screen as soon as you open your app. And the app icon is, of course, the icon when your app is on the home screen. All right, so I have Xcode open. I have my app running on the simulator here. Uh, I put my simulator back into light mode if you guys want to as well. And the first thing we're gonna do in this video is the launch screen. So when I have my app closed and I click it open, before we get into our actual list view is something called the launch screen. And right now it should be totally white. So if I click it, it's gonna go launch screen and then go white. And we couldn't see it that much because this is a very small app, so it loaded very quickly. But there was a split second in there where it was pure white. And so one more time, before we get to that screen, it's like pure white and then it switches into this screen. It's really hard to see when we don't have anything there, but sometimes if your app has a lot of information to load, it's a bigger app, a bigger file, it will stay and hang on that launch screen for a little bit while it's loading your app. And if you're gonna put an app into the app store, you absolutely need to include a launch screen. So we're gonna do that now. So there is a way to add a launch screen through the info.plist. And this is a lot of people are referring to as the Swift UI way. And when we open our Swift UI info.plist, we have this launch screen here. And there's actually nothing in this info.plist, but we can add in here, if we click the plus, um, a background color or an image name, and that will customize the launch screen. But I find that this method is a little bit buggy, doesn't always work as I expect it to work, and it's not super customizable. So I'm actually not advising students to use this method, at least just yet, until it can get a little more customizable. So we're gonna create a storyboard just for the launch screen. So I'm gonna actually press minus on this launch screen here to remove it from our info.plist. And let's close out of the simulator because it's making my computer fan go crazy. I'm gonna make this full screen and on our views, let's right click, create a new file and we're gonna create this time a launch screen. Go ahead and click next. And we can call it launch screen. I'm just gonna take out the space in here. So it's just one word, launch screen. Click create. And if you have never used a storyboard before, this might look scary to you, uh, but we're not gonna get into the details of how to use storyboards. Uh, this was very popular before Swift UI when we were using UI kit, you used a lot of storyboards but we're gonna just create a very simple uh, launch screen here. So let's click on this label, delete it. Let's open up the inspector on the right side. I'm gonna first change the background here. So let's click anywhere on this view controller. I'm gonna change the background color and let's use our named colors. Let's use accent color, which is, which is awesome. It's the color that we just had. And on here, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna click this plus for the library. I'm going to add an image, image view, sorry. Put it right in the center. I'm going to click on this, uh, these two bars down here, the alignment constraints. And I'm just going to check horizontally and vertically in the container so that it's right in the center of our screen. And then I'm just going to click on this other icon down here, the add new constraints with the four edges here. And I'm just gonna set the width and the height of this to be maybe 150 by 150. Let's click add two constraints. So now we have our image right in the center. And for the image, while this is selected, I'm going to click on the down arrow and we can add any of our system images here. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna start typing check and let's use the checkmark.circle. Or sorry, it's checkmark.circle.fill. And then for the tint color, I'm just gonna scroll down and make it white. I think that looks good. And then let's add one quick label under here. So I'm gonna click the plus, add a label. I'm gonna drag it right underneath this image. And while it's down here, I'm going to click on the add new constraints. 
I'm going to give it a top constraint, so the distance between the label and the image. And let's make that maybe 16. And then while it's still selected, I'm going to click on these uh, alignment constraints, these two bars, and just put it horizontally in the container so it is in the center. Lastly, while it's selected, let's change the color to be white. So we have white text. Let's change the font. Let's click on the T here. Let's change the actual font we have. Let's do uh, let's do large title, and let's change the text to say uh, doing things. You can put it whatever you want. This is just a nice little brief little launch screen, and let's connect this to our app. So to do that, all we have to do is go into the Project Navigator, click on the blue on the top of the Project Navigator, go to the General tab, and there is a launch screen file. And when we click the down arrow, it should now recognize our new launch screen. And let's run it on the simulator one more time. And when it launches, it should now have our beautiful new launch screen. Here it is. And then we are in our app. And that looked great. I'm going to stop the preview, I'm going to stop the simulator, press play one more time, we have our launch screen, and then we're in our app. That was fairly easy to do. And the last thing I want to do before we end this video is the app icon. So right here, uh, as you can see, the app icon doesn't look, we don't have an image on our app icon. And if you want to put your app in the app store, you definitely need an app icon. I think Apple doesn't even allow you to put it into the app store unless you have one. So the first thing I want to update is this to-do list name here. Right now it says to-do list one word, and that's just because that's the, pro the title of my Xcode project. But in this display name here, I can just change it and make it whatever I want to, to name it. You can put spaces in here, but I would definitely avoid any kind of special characters because I've noticed that special characters run into like build issues. So just keep it to regular characters and maybe some spaces. I'm gonna, and you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna write uh, maybe do stuff uh, just for fun. If we run the simulator, it should update the name do stuff. And now let's update the picture. Now I've already made the app icon for this app, and um, I made it to match the launch screen that we just made. So if you guys want to use it, I'm gonna link it below in the caption. It's actually on my personal website, um, which is www.nicksarno.com backslash downloads and on this we there should be the first of hopefully many app icons to come um, of the to-do list app icon if you click it it should just download it automatically and if you open it up it should have a file with a bunch of app icons now before we actually add it I want to show you how I made this in case you want to uh, make your own what I typically do, I go to canva.com, and I'm not f affiliated with Canva at all, but I find that their platform is just super easy to use. And when you make an app icon, you need to make it the largest required size. So in Xcode, if we open up the assets.xc assets folder and we go into app icon, you'll notice that there are a whole bunch of sizes here. And the largest is 1024 by 1024, and that's for one of the larger iPads. So in Canva, when I create a new project, I make sure that this project is 1024 by 1024 pixels. And Canva makes it really easy to do. There's a resize button, and you can just add in your pixels here. And then you can customize this however you want. I just added a background, added a little image on top, and then I downloaded it. Uh, after you have your larger image, there are websites that will help you make all of the pixel sizes. Because in Xcode, there's a whole bunch of pixel sizes, all these pixel sizes you need. And you could resize your image a bunch of times and then download all of these images. But if you just Google uh, make app icon, there are a bunch of websites such as this one, which I am also not affiliated with. But this is makeappicon.com. And you can just upload your large image here, which should be 1024 by 1024. And click next a bunch of times, add in your email, and then it will email you uh, basically all of these dimensions of your image. So once you have all of these dimensions, we can start adding them into our project. So in Xcode, uh, I'm going to keep this open here. And we need to just drag and drop all of these images into here. And we need to make sure that it's the right size. So I'm going to read this um, as 20 point times 2. So I'm going to look for 20 by 20 times 2. 
and drag it here. And if you drag the wrong image, it will notify you. So if I drag the wrong image to this one, we have this little error triangle here. So you'll know if you're doing this right or wrong. Um, 20 point times three, 29 point times two, 29 point times three. I'm gonna fast forward through this. Seventy six times two, eighty three, and iTunes artwork is our ten twenty four. Beautiful. So run it on the simulator, and it was that easy. We now have our app icon. All right, we have our app icon. We have our launch screen, and we are in our app. Our app is now complete. So I hope you guys enjoyed this course. I know this was a very very simple app, uh, but we did do a lot. We used perfect. MVVM architecture because we have our models, we have our views, and we have our view models. This is what MVVM architecture is all about. And within these views, we practice safe coding. We used guard let statements. We did all of the CRUD functions in our view model. So we did create, read, update, delete functions. Uh, and then we finished up our project by making it look good in light and dark mode. We make it look good on the iPad and horizontally. And then we added an app icon and launch screen. So I hope you guys enjoyed this course. If you did enjoy it, definitely don't forget to hit the subscribe button because there's a lot more videos and courses to come. Thank you all for watching as always. I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next course.